Hi, this is Scott Siberson, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about Google Classroom. Uh, Classroom is a nice feature that Google Apps for Education has created uh, to allow teachers to communicate and share easily with their students uh, utilizing their Google Apps for Education domain. So we're going to start today by looking at classroom.google.com and if you go there the first time you go to classroom.google.com it's going to ask you to get started using Classroom and ask you if you are a student or if you are a teacher. If you're a classroom teacher make sure you click the teacher button and have your students click on the student button. Um, so I'm going to click teacher and when I do that it's going to know who I am and it's going to let me in to Google Classroom and it says welcome and I have the ability up here in the upper right hand corner to create my first class. So I'm going to click on the plus button and I'm going to say create and I'm going to name a class and we're going to call this one technology PD 01 because it's the first class that I'm teaching with technology PD. Um, the section number might be helpful. Um, understand that the name actually goes to the name of a folder. So if this is section 1, don't put the 01 at the bottom and name your class Tech PD because the next class that you would create and put a 02 down there would have the same name on the folder. So put the 01 up there at the top and hit create and it'll go out and create that folder for you and it will create your class. When you open it up it's going to give you um, some information and some tours and things like that. Um, it is going to allow your name your course right there at the top. It's going to allow you to change the theme. If you want to change the theme you can select a theme. It's got some choices for you already. If you wanted to use a pattern instead it gives you some patterns. Um, you could also upload a photo if you created a photo um, to put on there. So if you had a photo of your class or something like that, you could put that right into your Google Classroom. So that's, you know, the getting started with your classroom and kind of customizing it. Uh, the next thing you'll notice is that there are three main areas to go in to your class. The stream is where everything happens. That's where announcements are made and assignments are given and all that kind of stuff happens in your classroom. The student area is where all of your students will show up. So if you want to invite them, you could send them invitations or you could give them the code and they could join your class. It is also where you give some permissions to the course. Can students post and comment? Can students only comment? We'll talk about those things a little bit later. Only teacher can post and comment. You can make this so that you're the only one that can put information into your course. So this is done through the student list. The next thing is the about. The about is what kind of makes your Google Classroom a web page and you could go through the little tour but I can also title my course Technology PD01. I could put in a little bit of a paragraph descriptor or something about the course. If I changed rooms, I could let them know what room that met in, or if I was on a campus, I could say what building and what room, that kind of information. But my kids all know where I'm at. Um, the next thing is it has your email address so people can get a hold of you. It also tells you what the name of your Google Drive folder is, and we'll look at that in, in a few minutes. Down at the bottom, there's this Add Materials area. You'll notice that you'll be able to link to different things or put documents on there, put stuff on from your Google Drive, uh, link to videos, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to call it the class blog, and then I'm going to put the link to the blog, and I'm going to put in...
a link to the blog and I'm going to add that as a link and I'm going to post it. That way you could see that that material is always in the area about the class. So if there are websites that you want your kids to go to or documents you want your kids to have, you can put that link on that permanent about page of your Google Classroom. So those are some things that you would do to get set up in your course. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I forgot to save this up at the top, so I'll call it Technology PD 01, and then make sure I hit the Save button, so that's all there and updated. Let's go back to the stream, because the stream is where all the activity happens. The first thing I'm going to take a look at is how to make an announcement. How do I tell the kids something about my course? So I'm going to click on the announcement and I'm going to say, Hi students, excited to get started with some technology PD. Um, you can always respond to this if you have questions. And that way we've got a, a dialog box set up ready to go. If I wanted to, I could attach a file off my hard drive or something. If I had a PDF that the students needed access to, I can attach anything from my Google Drive. I could attach a YouTube video, or again, I could attach a link. Um, I've seen a lot of people use announcements to post the link to a Google Form. And that way the students would have access to some kind of assessment or things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and post my announcement and it's going to show up. And then we're going to look at what this looks like from a student aspect in just a minute. The next thing I'm going to do is make an assignment. So if I click on the assignment tab, again it tries to take me on a little tour. I'm going to name this assignment, tell me something about yourself. So I'm gonna have them you know open the attached document and write a couple of paragraphs describing how you like technology. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it a due date. Let's say I give it a due date towards the end of the week. I could also add a time if I wanted to shut it off at a certain specific time. I could attach a file if I wanted to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm, okay, so I'm going to attach something out of my Google Drive. And when I go to my Google Drive, I can see that this Google Classroom About Yourself document is there ready to go. So I'm going to say add this assignment to Google Classroom. And then it gives me some choices as to what I can have the students do. I can give that document to the kids as view only. I can also make it editable so that they can all go on and edit the file or I can make a copy for each student. So when I click on that and I say assign, then it assigns that copy to each student. That way it is ready to go um, and we can work from there. So you can see there's in the stream, there's my announcement. You can see there's the first assignment. And then as we go, I'm gonna create another assignment called um, workshop or tech workshop and I could say in here please add your name and topic to the spreadsheet about the workshop. That way each student can do that. Again I pick a time so I'm going to add a, a due date, and let's make this due date the next week. Um, and again, I'm going to go to my drive. It's going to go out. I can find that spreadsheet and add it. 
And this time I'm going to have it so that the students can edit the file and make the assignment. So I've made a couple of assignments. You can see how they show up in my, in my stream. I can tell all that information. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy that class code. Actually, I'm going to move this down out of the way so that I can go over and I am going to, here's another account that is a student account, and I'm going to tell it that I want to join the class. So I am going to type in the code, which is 3 CT5I9, and I am going to join this class. So now you can see that I am part of this class, and it automatically puts in all the information that was assigned to me. So I can see when things are due, what's due, and then the announcement. So I have the ability to go in here and say, it's great to be part of this. Can't wait for more info. So I can just post a little comment back, and it tells us who put the post up. Um, and we'll look at what we see from the teacher standpoint. The next thing is I can go to this next assignment. I can click on the name of the assignment and it opens it up. Okay, so then I can open this document and when I open the document it made a copy of that document for me. Then it automatically put my username right on there for me. So I don't even have to name the document. It's done there for me. So I could put a brief description of me. So I could fill out that assignment and then the nice thing is I don't have to do anything special other than to go at the top and tell them I'm done. I want to turn this in. So I click the button, turn it in, and off it goes. It says your work has been submitted. Do I want to turn it in? Absolutely. And then it even tells me that I'm done. So your work has already been submitted. Now, if it's before the due date, I can go unsubmit it, make some more edits, and then turn it back in. So I'm never really finished until we hit that due date. To go back to my class, I just hit the arrow, I go back, I can look, oh, there's a check mark that shows that I've got it done. So as a student, it shows up right there, ready for me to go. Um, I can view all my assignments. The only one I still have due is this one about the tech workshop. So I'm going to quickly do that assignment. Click on it. Um, it says mark is done when I'm finished. So all I have to do now is let's go back to the instructions. It says, please add your name to the spreadsheet. So I open the spreadsheet. I put in my name. So I'm going to click in a box. And I'm going to choose my topic. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So it automatically saves because it's a Google Doc. So I can close it. And then I can go into that assignment now and mark it as done. Are you sure? Mark is done and now it is finished. So as a student, I can get around fairly easy. It's pretty intuitive as to what I see from that. Um, I could also see my classmates um, and do that kind of work. So all about this and here's the about the class. So I can see there's the description and there's that link to that website. So I'm going to go back to what I see as the teacher. So as the teacher, if I refresh my page, I'll notice that over here, ooh, that it tells me that one student has turned in the assignment. If I had more than one student in the class, it would tell me how many are not done. So if I click at the done, 
I can go in, I can open up this person's paper, and I can read it, I can comment on it, I can edit it, I can do all those kinds of things, and then I can go back and I could grade that assignment. Right now it's set to be 100 points, but I can choose other things. I could also make it ungraded. Really the points here are not very important, at least in my district, because we have a grading program. Um, we don't really use Google Classroom to do grades, um, but it, it's a good way to notify the students. So let's make it a 20 point assignment. And from there, I can give this user their grade. As soon as it's finished here, I can then go in and say, hey, you got 20 out of 20. Oh. And then I can return the assignment to that person. So I have the ability to, once they're done, I can return the assignment back. I could also email a student from here, all that kind of information. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and return it back to the student. I could also type in a note that says, well done. Okay, and return. Then the student gets ownership of the document back, and all that information is, is there. So let's take a look. So you can see what is available to students. You can see how it interacts with students and with teachers. Um, the nice thing about Google Classroom is Google Classroom does have an iPad or iPhone app as well as for Android devices. Um, so they can easily get into their Google Classroom right from their portable device. They can see the assignments. And because it's Google Apps for Ed, they can pretty much do their work on any device that has internet access. So the strengths of Google Classroom, one, you have the ability with About to be able to communicate and leave links to your students that they have access to from any device with internet access. From the stream area, you can make announcements to your students. You can give assignments to your students and easily pass out and collect from them information. And you have a class code, so anyone can join your class. All you have to do is give them the code and they can get in. The nice thing about the students, you can now see that every student that joins in is now in a list. So I have the ability to select a student and remove them from my class or email them or if it's a student that continually posts comments we can also mute that student so that that student doesn't have the ability to to dominate discussions or or to add things to your class um, so you have all those different bits of control the other thing that we didn't talk about is up in the corner the three little lines is your classroom main menu if you open that, you can see what courses you are teaching. You can also see what assignments you have going on. So that's up there in that home corner. There's a lot to Google Classroom. There's a lot of ways you can use it. There's a lot of ways to communicate with your students easily through Google Apps for Education. At the current time, you can only have students in from your domain. So in my domain, everyone has to be from the same set of schools. In the near future, they are talking about adding trusted domains so that you could work with people from other school districts. Um, so that's very important. The other thing is you can only get into Google Classroom with a Google Apps for Education account. So if you are not part of a school district or a work situation, you cannot get into Google Classroom. So I just wanted to take a few minutes and show you some of the very good benefits of Google Classroom. Hopefully you'll be able to use it in your class and make some, some good communication and collaboration happen between you and your students. The last thing I want to show you is how that stuff lives in your Google Drive. If you go to a new tab and go to your drive, 
you'll notice that Google automatically creates a folder for you called Classroom. Inside that Classroom folder, it will create a folder for every course that you teach or every classroom that you build. If I open that up, it will create a folder for every assignment that I make as well as collecting templates of the documents that I distribute. So you can very easily organize your life. If you share Google Docs with your kids, you know how messy it can get. But Google Classroom does the organization for you and passes off ownership of the documents to the student and to the teacher when it's needed. Thanks for spending some time with Google Classroom. Hopefully Google Classroom can help make your work with your students very beneficial.